Okay, so here we are. That's the motor in its little house. Wow! That is phenomenal. <laughs> that is great. Hello everyone. Well, we have a bow thruster and this thing works like a dream. I'm very happy with that. Little brushless motor, speed controller and it really packs a punch. You can see here the, uh, the homemade impeller and that's going to work a dream. That's going to be really good because I have the same thing in my submarines and they work really well. Interesting to think you can easily make your own. Uh, impeller because you'd think that would be the sticking point. So I'm going to give you a quick description now of how I made this, what the principles were, and then uh, the next video will be the detail of the build. So let's go. First of all you've got the receiver here, the uh, rudder out goes to the rudder on the stern. It's actually going to go through the Arduino because I want to do some other stuff, but that's another story. I'm also going to run it to the bow thruster. But the bow thruster power is going to come through a relay which is also going to be controlled by the Arduino. So I can turn it on, turn it off, and as soon as I do I've got full proportional control. Alright, how does it work? I like doing this because it's, uh, it's, a, it's like a an extension of the uh, work I've done on the um, uh, pumps on the submarines, the other two submarines that I have. This one doesn't have a pump like this because it's got the two pistons. Very simple process. You start with your impeller, and the impeller in this case has got some lugs on either side that you can screw onto. The interesting thing is, is when you look at the impeller, and when you look at the motor, sorry, I've been saying impeller the whole time, and it sort of looks like that. You actually have to screw it on there. And this is normally where the, I don't know, the, the propeller is or something like that. But what you want is to be able to screw this on to a bracket and have, have your motor drive like that. Now, the really good thing about using a brushless motor here well, there's about three different reasons. The first is that it comes with a speed controller. I mean, if you buy a brushless motor off the shelf, it's either on off or you have to buy a speed controller for it. This is automatically part of the, part of the deal. The second thing is it's small. It really has tucked away nicely, as you can see in that little enclosure. But the third thing, and this is the, this is the real, really important one, is you can remove the shaft from a brushless motor and replace it with a long one. If you've got a brushed motor here, what you're constantly doing is thinking about how do I connect up to this little shaft? Because you can't do anything with that. With a brushless motor, you just get a nice long piece of uh, stainless steel, the right width, obviously, and push it in, and there it is. And it all fits beautifully. So it makes this very easy to do. So the first thing to do is to get a piece of square brass, drill it in the middle with a, in this case, a uh, four mil hole. No, it's three. It's three. That's the, that's the witness of, with, thickness of the shaft that runs through the brushless. Slide that into place and then while it's in place, drill and tap your holes so that you can put the um, brushless motor and bolt it into place. That's pretty simple. Now we need to make the um, uh, seal. This is the critical part for a motor like this. And in this case, I put a piece of brass in the lathe. Uh, in this case, it was around about 15 mil because it actually helps to have a thick piece, and I'll explain why as we go. But I've got scrap. That's all there is. 
So I put that in the, in the lathe, put the dial indicator on it, get it all running nicely, and then drill it right through the middle. Not three, but 3.25. I want a bit of clearance on it. Okay, once I've done that, I machine a little shoulder on there. Enough to take the thickness of my brass plate that I'm mounting the motor to. Next thing to do is to take my piece of brass like that with the little shoulder down there, put it in the uh, pedestal drill and drill two holes in the end. Um, and these holes need to be the right thickness to take a 3mm tap in this case. It depends what size you want. Actually a thinner, a thinner drill and a thinner hole would be better, but 3mm is, is pretty good. It doesn't break that easily and, and that's a critical issue. So I put those in and, and I tap them out, making sure not to break through to the other side. This is about 20, 20 mil thick, uh, long, this piece of brass. Then I put it back in the lathe that way. I've got the hole through the middle. I've got my tapped holes here. So what I do now is line this up really carefully so that it's really good. And then I put the parting tool on and part that off. What that does is it gives me a perfectly fitting flange to bolt onto the front of my seal. So let's, this is getting a bit old, this board. So now we have our big piece of brass in the lathe. I now take um, the seal I'm going to use on the uh, three mil shaft. I don't have it here with me. Oh, I do. <laughs> it's so small, it's actually that big. It'll just fit over the three mil shaft. And I measure the outside of it, and I put a recess in here to hold my little piece of um, my little round O-ring. It's pretty cheap. I bought a box of these for practically nothing, and, and that's all you need. Don't let anyone tell you you need anything too, too schmick. And so, when I put the O-ring in, I want it to be like that. I want it to be proud. So all I have to do now is put my flange on here, screw it up, and it screws in against the shower. That's a very simple sealing method. So, the next step is pretty simple. We put the square piece of brass in the lathe, line up on that central hole, and bore that out until it's a lovely fit over the uh, seat on the end of the seal and then we silver solder it on. So what we've got now is a connection for our um, motor, we've got a seal that works really well, we've got one shaft running through, it's all pretty easy so far. So the next thing I'm going to do, because my motor is going to sit in the water, is I have to think of a way of sealing both ends before I, before I even do the impeller. So, the next step is to take a piece of, um, in this case it was PVC pipe, um, cut a piece of plastic so that it was a nice push fit into the pipe, and also a nice snug fit for my seal, glue my um, little contraption in like that, so that I can screw the motor onto there and then I can think about the front. But the first thing that I did in this case was to take another piece of plastic and machine it down and put a groove in it, a groove in it, and another o-ring so that it will push onto the end. So that seals it because it's very important with something like an impeller or any kind of pump that you, that you let it breathe. Between, um, between the times that you use it. I also machined that out a fair bit, a bit, a bit of room, and then drilled three holes for the wires, epoxied the wires in so they're not going to move, and then I drilled another hole for a breather tube. And that's also, that's partly, it's not really a breather tube, I use that to uh, pressure test the whole thing and I'll just put a cap on it. So the next thing to do was to get a piece of a block of plastic. 
actually cut it out of something like this. It's 25 mil thick. And I made this block of plastic, and the first thing that I did with it, when I, and it's square, I, I like it to be square primarily because of the very first step, which is to get a hole, oh, <laughs> great, you don't get a hole, you drill a hole, is to drill a hole, in this case it was um, uh, 10 mil, a 10 mil hole, because it's 10 I spaced it in um, 7 and 7, so it was in there with a nice little bit of flesh, right up in that corner of that plastic. Drilled it right through, because that's the, that's the uh, hole that will fit my um, pump um, sleeves there. That, that actually pumps the water. And I just had these free, so I just made the hole the right size to fit those. Right, now we go in the lathe again, and the exciting part, I really enjoy this bit, is to take my piece of plastic, it's got the hole in here, da 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 center this thing up, drill a hole through there so that I've got a nice center, and then open this whole thing out until it captures the whole of that drilled hole, and sinks it in so that I've got that beautifully captured by my um, pump housing. Then I keep drilling this out, naturally enough, so that it fits the seal. That's pretty simple stuff, isn't it? I also then put a couple of screws in here so that I could screw it straight into there. It doesn't have to be watertight because this is in itself, this is in the drink anyway, but this is watertight right here. I just had to make sure those screw holes didn't go right through the plastic. Um, then, of course, you've got to make an impeller. That's real easy. And it's just a matter of using some round plastic, putting it in the lathe. And this is, once again, uh, the great advantage of a uh, brush motor with that nice 3 mil shaft. With the fine shaft from another motor, from a, a brushed motor, I found that I had to make a brass plug to push into a plastic uh, impeller. Um, don't have to. This is a good, you can really grip onto a 3mm shaft. So I put my a piece of plastic in here, drilled out a 3mm hole, cut it down to about the right size that I wanted so that it fitted neatly, to try and explain it, you do this by eye really, but if you've got your, your, your uh, recess here, and there is your hole running through, you really want your impeller to be about that big. You want it to be just touching the full size, that, that part, so you can actually see the blades turning around and pushing the water through. Put the 3 mil hole in the middle, I drilled a 3 mil hole through there and tapped it with a grub screw. The only way to get it off, mind you, is to put the, um, is to put the screwdriver in. I have to remove this and put the screwdriver in to undo it. Um, and then comes the impellers, the actual blades, which are just pieces of plastic. I just saw it and, and super glued the bits of plastic in. The important thing is you only need two thirds of that distance. You don't, you don't want to go right to the outside. I did that on one pump. I put them right to the outside. It was bloody efficient. The thing was, it broke one of the blades and then the blade got jammed somewhere else. And I realized you don't need that. And you've seen this one operate. It's, it's really good and it's only two thirds. Put a cover on it, you're done. <laughs>